everyone and welcome to the map Grusvan. Joining me here in the upper left, the blue Terran, the mechanical master. It is Gumiho. And his opponent spawning in in the bottom right here, usually quite an aggressive mid-game Zerg, it is Solar. Gumiho versus Solar TVZ, guys. Where is this Overlord going? Hmm. Proxy check. Perhaps Gumiho was up to no good in a previous game of this series. Now, be honest here. I will be honest here. I have not seen the game. But somebody, in their recommendation to this, did give me a little note. It said, <clears throat> quote, a Gumiho special. <laughs> so, I'm not quite sure what that is referring to. Gumiho is known for many things that could be construed as special, of course. Very mech-focused, a little slower in the APM side. Some shenanigans could be afoot this match already marine first not unheard of but a little unusual typically of course you would see a scouting reaper made reapers of course very useful in their cameraman role or if you're beyond in the world championship winning role but most of us are not beyond so reapers cameramen that get around they get into all those hard to reach nooks and crannies finding out that your zerg opponent has a spawning pool like wow that's so informative yeah it tends to be doesn't it third base looking to go down for mr solar here checking just checking around make sure there's nothing crazy happening again he hasn't seen the marine first come out. All he knows is there's been no reaper. How strange. Three marines into a reactor. Hmm. Could go onto the factory. No. He's making a single hellion. Most bizarre. Gumiho, what are you up to in this match? My eyes are on Gumiho because of that note. Solar on the other side, it's a macro Zerg build. He's making drones, he's making queens, pulled off of gas to get the third base up and running. The usual stuff. He made a single Hellion and is making a tech lab. Or the starport, I assume, based on the proximity. The Banshee opener. Mm-mm. Oh god. <laughs> really? It's a fusion core, guys. Of course it is. The Hellion takes a little poke at the third base. No major damage, though. The starport is now on the tech lab, idle, waiting for that crucial tech requirement. The Gold League Terran unit of choice here. It's going to be a battle cruiser game. Well, Indigos, it could be Liberator range. Yeah, you don't usually get a tech lab for Liberators, though. <laughs> oh boy, Solar, how is how is he gonna prepare for this? We now know confirmation it is a battle cruiser opener. Solar, he's in the dark. He is not dark, but he is in the dark right now because he doesn't know that it's a two port two port BC. Oh, good lord. If he makes a tech lab off of this, that's potentially scary. He is making a tech lab. Okay, it is going to be a full on battle cruiser game from our Terran here. And the factory is still sitting on the reactor, so he's making a bunch of Hellions, too. Maybe able to get that good old one-two punch. 
BCs jump into the main draw, all the queens away, hellions run into the third base, have themselves a little drone barbecue. Uh, calm down, Terrence. I, I know you guys drooling, foaming at the mouth over there now. Yamato Cannon, about halfway down the first BC, is going to come here. And does he warp it right away? He does. Alright, where are we going? Back of the main. Of course, it's the back of the main. Solar now spots the BC for the first time as it enters his drone line. The lair is not done, barely halfway, which means the spire is going to be very far away. Solar a little bit greedy up against this battle cruiser opener here, not going for the overlord speed to see what Gumiho was up to. And now this overlord pays the price. Gumiho, good to God. Two port battle cruiser. Yamato Cannon gonna finish up some Hellions are gonna wrap around the left side. Do you want both of your forces on the left side? Because all of the queens are here now, because the battle cruiser was over here. I don't think so. I think yeah, you use the battle cruiser to lure the queens away. Oh god, Yamato. Yeah. The spire has started, but it is still a solid minute, a minute and a half away at least, from having any sort of corruptors on the field, so. God, these VCs could get a lot of damage done. And he's got more somewhere. They just warped in. Yamatoing the Queens down, the Hellions are gonna get caught by the defensive forces at the third. No major damage there. But the BCs are just having their way with the place. Gunning down all of the Queens. The mule drop. Gumiho, that's not polite. but I wanted to use it for repairs. I wasn't trying to be rude. Gumiho, that's still not polite. We don't do that. You pull the BCs back, and then you drop the mule. <laughs> A few roaches and some speedlings heading across to the other side. The BCs <clears throat> getting a bit low. Don't, do not, no, no, Gumiho. Loses a... BC, gonna Yamato some queens. Defensive battle crews are gonna be able to repel the Zerg force, and the third base has landed. These two, there is no anti air here for Solar. Corruptors have popped out now, though. How many has he got? Plus one, he's got 11 corruptors, which, uh, I mean, it's great for taking down these low one Solar. He's going to force them to work back, giving a little bit of map control back to the Zerg. Hellion's going to make their way into this base, though, with a ton of drones. He warping over here. Oh my god. BC warping to rendezvous with the now dead Hellions. Meanwhile, some corruptors make their way into the base here. They'll be able to pick off the battle cruiser potentially. This one just warped in over here, so he's not getting out. Zoom for dramatic effect, of course. SCVs pulled off the line to repair battle cruisers from the threat of roaches climbing on top of each other to hit the BCs, I guess. The corruptors have lost their sense of purpose in life. Meanwhile, there's still Hellions trying to make their way around here. 13 drones have fallen. 14 drones have fallen. Gumiho scanning. He said, Have you taken a fourth base yet? No. Gumiho, you've been slapping him across the face with battle cruisers for the last four and a half minutes. Who has time to make a fourth base when they're dealing with that? How many BCs? He's only got these three. Two more popping out. He's lost four. Good God. Still, you know, we could pull up the numbers again. Still relatively cost effective on the mineral front. 31 drones have fallen for Solar, which is not a fun position to be in, especially when your opponent is going up to mech. 
Usually, if you can identify that the Terran is going for a mech build, you want to get greedy. You want to drone up, get all of your economy in order, so then you can start doing the wave-by-wave -wave attacks to try and shut down the mech player from expanding. We'll see how successful Solar is really going to be with that. He's starting off a little bit behind, shall we say. He's still making battle cruisers. Legit. The man has three marines, five battle cruisers, and some hellions that are probably not making it out of there. Real one-way trip for these hellions. Roach is gonna respond with the defense, corruptors. Not sure where they're going, but they're going places. A few more drones actually gonna be picked off. Hellions making themselves a little useful, and we're seeing a magfield cyclone follow-up. Not the usual pick. A Gumiho special indeed. Whichever one of you added that note. <laughs> what a what a mess. What a disaster. The five BCs slowly trudge their way around the map, make their way into the main base. They're going to force the Corruptors, wherever they are, wherever the Corruptors are. He's going for the lair. He gets the lair, and he's going to warp out. One BC does fall, but getting the lair. Ouch. Do you start one up right away? He's getting Burrow from the natural, so he can't get it from there. The Hellions come in, get drone kills galore. The loss of the lair is rather big because now there's no more further tech that you can make. You can't go up to Hive for Vipers, which are very nice against battle cruisers, might I say. Solar. Solar falling more and more behind, it feels. He's gonna remake He's gonna remake the lair. He's gonna lose a few more drones over at the fourth base. The BC harass, the Hellion harass, it's I was gonna say such a good combo. I might still say it's such a good combo, despite him losing that BC. This command center, there you go. I was going to say it's a little off, but he knows. Oh, he gunned down those creep tumors, despite using Hellions for all... Yeah, I was going to say, where's the blue flame, Gumeho? Been using Hellions almost the entire game. No bonus versus light units, it seems. It says, I don't need it just yet. I'm, I'm getting my fourth base established and mining. Fifth base landed. Gumiho looking to be in a fantastic position here. He has stopped making battle cruisers, though. Gold Terrans everywhere cry out, What? Why? Why would you stop making battle cruisers? Don't you know they're good unit? Hellions dealing with a little bit of creep, forcing some roaches around. Ling's gonna open up the rocks, make sure that Solar has access to all the pathways that he can access. Did he get Neural? No. No Neural. So what's the plan with the infestors? Is it fungal? I assume it has to be fungal then to try and keep them from warping. Does fungal keep them from warping? Fino fungal keeps things from blinking. We're gonna assume it keeps them from warping. Been a long time since I thought, ooh, there's battle cruisers, let me get fungal growth. Usually, usually the play you see is neural. Get neural parasite, mind control, all of those battle cruisers. The Hellions decide to transition to Hellbats, making sure that they escape that corrosive bile as closely as possible. Is Gumiho just turtling up now? Has he just transitioned to the defensive mech style? It's tough to say, because the battle cruisers can still do a lot of damage. He's got seven BCs. The scouting barracks. Find some roaches. Little skirmish with the Hellions at the bottom of the map here. The Solar eventually did make his way to Hive. I don't see any Vipers, but he is going up to Broodlords, pardon me. Some Roaches. 
just outside of the range of the siege tank there, the Corruptor's going to fall to a barrage of Yamato cannons. These Terran armies that get so big and bulky, you have to zoom out to actually see anything. Solar taking a few losses there. Cost efficiency, definitely in favor of the Terran. Even despite losing some of the battle cruisers throughout the match, the Terran is quite far ahead in the economy setting. How many bases? One, two, three, four, five. It's a five base mech player, that's pretty scary. If you let your mech player get up that far, get settled defensively. Saw a Viper. One Viper. Uno Viper. We've got it now, Zerg players. I don't know. The BC count up to eight, that's pretty heavy actually. You're gonna need a lot more. Roach Ravager trying to deal with the siege tanks. The combination of all of those, Gumiho really did a good job pulling all these pieces together. He's got cyclones and siege tanks to help deal with the roaches, a lot of hellions, hellbats for lings. The BCs seem to be able to manage themselves reasonably well against the corruptors. Have to see what kind of battle takes place here. There are a lot of corruptors. He's got 20. Is it enough? Oh, especially nice if you can combo with some corrosive vials like that. Gumiho kind of just walking into that fungal growth onto the cyclones and the BC's Yamato barrage and coming corruptors affected by the anti-armor missile. They are pushing forward. The BCs are going to have to retreat, and the Roach Ravager are successful at repelling most of the ground forces here. Reinforcement Cyclones are going to force the Zerg to retreat. But he pretty much won the air battle. He cut the BC count in half. He's replenishing 10 more Corruptors and getting some Broodlords. There we go. That's the play. You clear the skies. You win the air control. And then your Broodlords can start to do some real damage. Gumiho does not have any Thors. He does not have any Ghosts. And he does not have any Vikings. And he knows now. They have four Thors immediately in production. Little late on that one, Gumiho. There's still time, though. The Broodlords, they did get their little bit of speed buff, but not so much that it's out of control and they can just zoom across the map here. Siege Tank's gonna have to vacate the position. Broodlord and Fester have comboed together here onto the board. Just let it burn. <laughs> let it go down. All right. Gumiho letting Solar take some of these outlying bases. Meanwhile, the battle cruisers actually gonna try and pull the corruptors back. It looks like the Brood Lords. Maybe just making sure that you can't warp on top of the Brood Lords if you keep the broods with the corruptors a little bit. The ground force actually gonna go around the top side though. A lot of cyclones and siege tanks here. Gumiho forcing, <coughs> forcing Solar out of position. Not sure where the BCs are warping to, but they got there. Corruptors have whittled the BC count down to only two, and there's 16 Corruptors left. That is way too many. One of the vulnerabilities of going the Corruptor route is if you clear the BCs and you have just a boatload of Corruptors left over, they're not quite useful. The mech force here gonna get caught by the Broodlords. Siege tanks are all going to fall. The cyclones. Nope. <laughs> Thor's, Thor's try to get there for the defense. Not going to be able to. The two remaining battle cruisers are moving in. The cyclones get underneath the corruptors. That's always nice. Fourteen drones have fallen. I think the focus now is going to shift to the Thors. Neural. They're fungal growth. That's fine too. Cannot get out, but you still have to deal with the Thors here. He's making them five at a time. Good lord. Brood lord count at ten. Conflict. 
Oh no, don't sacrifice the overlords. Send the overlords in. Or not, that's fine too. More broodlords being morphed in, and they're trying to get some damage done onto the Thors. If the broodlings can get a decent surround, and the roaches can provide ground cover. The Thor range is so long though, where are the vipers? They're non-existent. The vipers are non-existent. I don't think this can work without viper support. You need something either of ducks to pull and isolate Thors, or blinding cloud to actually let the broodlords get their damage done. Oh, he has Neural. Neural may work. He's got 10 investors, too. Whew, that hell back got torched. What's going on up here? Just a small ground force. The big battle is here. Broodlord, investor, can he get the Neurals off? Can he secure the Thors? Because, of course, you know, the best counter to Terran units is Terran units. Why do you think Terrans hate playing TVT so much? Oh my god, he can build Thors too. A tense moment. The Broodlord's gonna get caught actually by a lot of the Thors and the Infestors are not in place. Neural's going onto the left side here. Infestors immediately being picked off, but the Thors at the bottom are really getting the damage done here. The Broodlord count has been reduced to 3. The Thor count at 12. Solar not able to get it done. Gumiho. Yeah. A Gumiho special indeed. That is all I have to say on that one. If you enjoyed, be sure to let me know in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you have a great day.